Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And my dear friends and those who are watching, as we come to celebrate sacred mysteries, we ask God for forgiveness and pardon of our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be my God have mercy on us, forgive us all sins, and bring us to our lasting life. Amen.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before God, God, and Father. Knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This weekend coming up is an exciting time for our young people as Saturday night will be, I have the mission from the bishop to confirm, 30 of our young adults, um, or might even be more than 30, because it's um, yeah, about 30, 31 of our young adults, uh, because our bishop should have been here, but because of the pandemic, he's limiting his visiting parishes, so I will have the honor to be able to confirm them and welcome them into the church. And, you know, it's something because I don't get to see enough of um, not only you at home in Edison and those on YouTube, but I don't get to see enough of our children, and I totally understand why. But I pray that by these, um, these uh, virtual masses that we're doing, that you feel that connection with the parish, especially when we're celebrating. And yet we look at the scripture today, and Jesus was was evangelizing. He was giving his message out to all the people that needed to hear it about the kingdom of heaven and how to prepare. And yet there were some evil thoughts of other people and how they would trap him and how they thought they would trap him by saying, are you going to pay the census tax? And his, his wonderful way of turning it around. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. 
And I reflected on that, that last line, I'm with belongs to God. Truly our whole being belongs to God. All of our talents and our, our treasures, everything that we do belongs to God. And we know that in those days, the tax, the temple tax was totally different than the taxes we pay today. Because the taxes we pay today are truly done very legitimately, I hope. And, um, and, and they're, they really are able to help those who are poor and those who are needy. But back then, the, the taxes going to Caesar was truly being skimmed from the top and really being taken advantage of. So it really was, it was really abusing the, the, the poor and hardworking people who found it just so difficult to be able to pay that tax. And Jesus put himself with the lowest of lowly. And he said, we will pay the tax. And when he did, he gave him a coin which was worth even more than the temple tax. And it really shows the symbolism. Do we give to God more than we could ever even imagine? Do we allow ourselves to be in the service of God? And those who are at home who are watching, who are so faithful to our parish, were we so faithful at that when we were younger, in a sense of being able to be of service? And I know we were, because when I look at our beautiful school, and knowing that it is our, our older parishioners who truly built the school, built this church, and truly will continue to be able to build the kingdom, the, the church, and pleasing for the kingdom of God, we know that, that that building is something that is part of us, and that is something the Lord is inviting us to do. He's inviting us to be able to turn ourselves completely over to Him, and to be able to give all that we have to Him, so that we'll be at the service of others, and that we'll be pleasing for Heavenly Father. We pray this day that God gives you that grace, and that gives you that understanding, and also gives you that witness with Him, so that we do not allow the worldliness to be able to pull us away from our godliness, the worldliness which is self-centeredness and selfishness, to be in God's center, which is given, and being at the service of others and praying for others, and being able to be that missionary within our own parish of reaching out and bringing the message of the gospel. Let us pray that God will be able to give us that grace and that we'll be able to be one with our Father this day and every day. <coughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born in the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, God not made, but substantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He was born in the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified into righteous power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He sent into heaven, and they see at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no ends. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who receives from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has broken through prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, confess for baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and I the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to God who hears the cry of the poor. Please respond to our petitions by praying, and the Lord hear our prayer. That the church continue to preach the gospel with power and conviction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That governments ensure fair taxes and provide needed services, especially for the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community 
that this community's work, that communities work together to end neglect and abuse, especially of children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. That neighborhoods at every economic level provide safe haven for those in crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. For all who come to this table to be nourished with love, especially those who live alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, to our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, especially Winfred, Winfred Rush, that they may find eternal happiness in the presence of our risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Ferrari, Anna Kavini, Frank Dunaj, and Dr. Tadula Aranda, all for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the men and women in our armed forces, for the safety of all police officers, the safety of all firefighters, for first responders, for doctors, nurses, for the special attentions in our prayer request book, for the homebound, for the sick, and for the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O careful God, ever, everything we have comes from your hands. Return it all to you, asking only your mercy. Hear our prayers we ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
death, spread the blood, and let it do fall. Take up for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he created and entered wingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks for it, gave, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
Grant our Lord, we pray, that benefiting from the participating in the heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in the present age and prepare for the gift of eternal of eternal of gift that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of reminders um, for everyone. One is that again I congratulate on the Confirmandes. We of course we're taking two masses um, today. So this is before this weekend, and that'll be the first mass you'll see on Saturday, which is the 18th. So um, so I want to thank, congratulate them ahead of time. Also I congratulate our school and religious aid program because with the Holy Childhood we came in um, in the top three, so most likely we most likely came in first. So I will be going um, today is Wednesday. I will be going um, with Sister Mary Charles and Miss Saltis and some and two families for a special presentation with our bishop to receive the award. So I'm so proud of our school and religious said of all of our children, and we'll be doing it safely today. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, the script has taken off. So we are looking uh, for people, if you're interested, just give the office a call or go online because it, everything is online. Same with the religious state program is starting, so that is all online. All right, now for the big announcement. We started the campaign, as you heard, uh, Mrs. Arlene gave a beautiful presentation on Saturday. Well, two dates. I am so far, we are making such progress and with, with, um, with so many of our extremely generous families, we have raised $1,012,525 to date, so I am so ecstatic. But we have not stopped, because as our faith in our future campaign continues, we have the brochures, and it's also online, and if you would like it to be mailed to you at home, give um, Carrie as the secretary a call, and we'll be happy to mail it to you. But this coming up this week and the next week and two weeks, you'll be receiving your campaign card with a personal letter from me. I ask you to pray on that, those who have not given yet, to pray on that and to make your donation. Those who have given, I am so humble and so grateful and I'm so thankful to you. As your pastor, I have made my pledge and my payment, so, my, so I have done so. I cannot ask others to do something that I will not do first. So, so mine is in that as well. So I'm excited. I'm hoping that hopefully next spring, maybe next summer, we'll be able to do the sanctuary and the work that needs to be done in order to praise God and our beautiful house and our beautiful kingdom. So that is the exciting news uh, that I share with you today. Um, also, I pray for all of you to always keep safe and I do miss you all very, very much to know that we are here. Father Joseph, the deacon, myself, Sister Rebecca, Sister Charles, we're all here. So if there's ever anything you do, just give the office a call and we'll be more than happy to help us. I think um, this week, Father's going to be hearing one of our seniors' confessions outside. I think you're going to be doing that this week. So we're getting some pretty interesting requests in order to be able to keep everyone safe. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May my God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Master's ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have an amazing week. Always remember, face cover, keep safe distance, and if you're able to get outside, just enjoy the nice brisk air that we have today. God bless you.